Hi. Hi, people. Oh, hello. Uh, who's that? That's John, Katie. Nice to see you. Nice to see you, Katie. Um, Corinna, nice to see you again. Excellent. Oh, oh, you, oh, you can't join me today. Never mind. That's fine. Uh, well, hi, hi to you retrospectively. <laughs> and uh, Julie. And uh, same, same with you, Julie. Okay, great. Um, can everyone hear me okay? Just uh, a yes would be great. I, th I think it's working now. It was. It worked last. Yes. Hi. Hi, Inquiry. How nice. Inquiry's um, uh, uh, has has trained with me uh, as a teacher. Uh, she's great. If you can, if you get a chance to work with her, um, uh, well, get in touch with her. Inquiry Medley. I'm not sure where she is at the moment. She keeps moving around. But uh, uh, are you, is, is it right? You're heading to Oxford or something? I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, um, yes. So that uh, that bell is it's um, it's an app. I've got an app called it's a meditation app. Um, uh, I can't remember what it's called right this moment. So I'll, I'll let you know another time. There's Ginger. Oh, Sheffield! You're you're going to Sheffield, are you, Inquiry? Okay. Well, those of you in Sheffield looking for some Scaravelli inspired yoga in in, in the Aquaviva sort of vein, um, do look out for Inquiry Medley. Okay. Um, yes. So, um, taking questions. Uh, let's see. Where am I at today? I I I've had a question already from someone. Um, don't know if she's watching now. Uh, around about pain, and and uh, that came up um, for someone last time as well. Is what do you do? What do you do when you're in pain all the time? Um, it's a difficult one, uh, but it's it, but it's something that I'm ver I'm very familiar with from my own practice. When I came to yoga as an adult, um, which is twenty six years ago now, uh, when I was thirty, uh, it was because I was in pain, and um, it was relentless. It was uh, I'd, uh, it, it would seem to increase throughout the day, and then. Um, <laughs> By the time it was, by the time I got to bed, it was um, unbearable, <laughs> and it was uh, sometimes it was a job to get to sleep because of it. And then, if I didn't get a good night's sleep, which was most nights, I would wake up feeling a little more in pain. So, uh, so it was a it was a horrible situation. And when and when um, I rediscovered yoga, because I used to do it as a child, and I don't know why I didn't turn to it um, before. It was on the on the um, advice of Pete Blackaby, actually, because uh, I was seeing him as an osteopath, and he said, "Why don't you just do some yoga?" And the light went, light bulb went off um, like a firework, because uh, I used to do it as a child. You see. Anyway, yes, I used to be in a lot of pain, and the the the, the thing that was uh, mostly difficult about it was this feeling of it happening to me. As opposed, uh, well, what happened when when um, when I started working with Pete and started going to his classes was an understanding that the pain was a a sort of a function of the way I was doing things. Um, so, and and that I could do things in a different way. That was that's the key. So, I started applying myself to this this yoga, which involved listening to uh, what I was doing rather than just doing it, trying to achieve doing it, listening to how I was doing it with the idea of making it nicer. And just that fact meant that I could relieve myself of some of the, some of the difficulties. So from, uh, and uh, you know, that was an enormous liberation, an enormous freedom, rather than being trapped in this body that was doing stuff to me. Um, I was able to do things that would relieve me of the pain. And um, what's more is uh, as I started to undo the difficulties, some of the aspects of how I thought about life and um, other things sort of came to me. 
it came to my awareness as I was undoing those tensions. So, you know, uh, obvious stuff. Like um, uh, I, I noticed I wasn't using the ground to support myself. Why? Because I didn't feel supported. Uh, and, and if I engage with doing that, hello, my love. That's Abigail. She's uh, just watching now. Um, yes, if I engage with doing that, supporting myself, I could find ways where I felt uh, ways of moving and, and, and uh, being in space that was supported from my touch. I could do something about it. Massive liberation. Um, yeah, uh, there, there wasn't an instant freedom from pain, but what happened was uh, my relationship to my body changed, as in um, I could do something about things that were difficult. It was an empowering moment right, when I realized that I could do something. And what, uh, yes, and in the engagement with these ideas of finding support through my bones and uh, trying to find freedom and ease in what I do, just um, as, as I went along, uh, discovering the releases that occurred uh, because I found support, because I changed the way I was interacting with the world around me, um, the, 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 the pains that I was experiencing before turned into um, uh, transformations, as in, uh, in the let go, I would sort of understand something about the nature of life and, and existence and myself, at the same time as um, a direct feeling of joy and bliss at the liberation, at the, at the, at the potential freedom even. So even if I didn't quite resolve the pain in that moment, um, I could see the light at the end of the tunnel. So the, the relief was, was as much to do with my relationship to my body as to do with the pain itself. And um, yes, and that's kept going really. It's, it's um, oh, hi Dharma Bandhu, nice to see you. So um, yes, what can I, what can I say? Um, when, when we're in pain, we, we very naturally seek out situations where, when we're not. And that um, the starting point of that is to um, relax. <laughs> to be able to be relaxed around the area of difficulty because the, the, the pain itself will cause contraction and the contraction will sustain the complication in the body um, and sometimes be the source of the pain. So if you can organize yourself in a way that uh, takes that problem out, um, as in don't do that, you know, <laughs> it's a perfectly natural response. If something hurts, you don't do it. Um, but that's the starting point, and that's actually where most people stop. Uh, and that's why uh, life can become sedentary. And that, that's, that's okay if that's what you want to do, and, and you can afford to do that. And you, you have a kind of life that, where you can do nothing but be relaxed. But um, the, the yoga practice also needs to uh, help you find a way of engaging with life with these relationships that allow you to be relaxed. So, oh, big Cohen. So it's a big, so it's a big job to change mindset. Um, so the, so the, 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 the question follows, how, how do I support myself and feel relaxed? And it takes you into investigative approach to yoga. And, um, that, that, and that's kind of uh, where I'm at with it, really, is uh, if you're in pain, by all means, stop doing the thing that was causing you pain, relax, but then you have to tune in to how you do things. And I personally would reapproach the thing that was causing me pain, inverted commas, because it's not, it's not the thing, it's the way I'm doing it that causes the pain. Um, I would reapproach it with an idea that there are ways of doing things to do with how I support myself from my earth, my touch, through my bones, through my joints. Um, there are ways of doing it that don't cause the pain. And, and when, when you find those relationships, you will find different muscles working. Uh, you don't need to know what they are. It's sometimes good to have a teacher validate them for you because it is different, and that, that and that's the that's the bottom line. It, it will be different. The way you do it will be different. So it will take some practice to get used to doing things differently. But when you find 
that different way of doing it, but it's more integrated and less aggressive, um, less less um, complicated at the area that is complaining, then you will have found um, a line of support that is less complicated. So the result is your movement um, will begin to incorporate this new way of doing things. So, um, yes, I feel like I'm talking loads. I, I would like a, a question. Has anyone got any anything they would like to work on particularly? Uh, I have um, 15 minutes or so. How long am I doing this for? Yes. Got about another, I've got about 15 minutes. So I'd like to uh, be able to help someone with something. So um, something specific rather than a generic sort of idea. Any questions? No? I can, ah, hello Jane, nice to see you. Um, so I, I'm, I'm asking if there, if anyone's got anything they would like to work on. Have you, have you got any, um, your knees, John? Okay, great. Um, what, what's occurring for them? Uh, do they complain when you walk or when you, um, when you just sit or what? If you give me a clue as to uh, what you would like to do about your knees or when they have a problem, then I can probably come up with something to help. I know there's, there's a bit of a time lag with this thing, so um, um, forgive me if I go quiet for a little while. Knees, knees, knees. I, I, um, hmm, okay, I, I'll guess it's to do with walking. A, a common, a common um, way of thinking of knees. When I go downstairs, they hurt. I see. Yeah. Um, yes. Okay. So I'm guessing when you take a step down, um, you may not know whether you do this or not, but I think, I'm guessing when you take a step down, let's see what happens. Hang on. Let me line this up. But only sometimes. Yes. Um, so yes, when, when, when you take a step down, I'd imagine the knee that you're reaching down from is pulling up. And I, I would imagine that the knee or the leg that stays behind on the step is, um, is probably working quite hard to support you. I would guess that. Um, so, um, well, uh, a way of looking at the knee joint is to think of it as a relationship. And this is uh, one of my um, tricks to help people uh, review and shift the way they're using their bodies. If you, if you think of the knee joint um, and the muscles around the knee, um, the thing that you experience as your knee having a problem, it's not the knee itself. The knee is a relationship between how you use your foot at one end and how you use your hip at the other end. If, if uh, the knee is something that's defined uh, as the joint in the middle of the leg, okay? It, it's not limited to that. Uh, the knee could be considered as a relationship between the whole of your body and what you do with your foot at the other end, foot and ankle. And if you can treat it as such, then um, in walking, and walking, including walking down the stairs, then it's not necessary to lock the knee here to reach the step below. Um, it's the locking of the knee that uh, squishes the joint and sort of braces around it to cause the problems. Um, so that, and then when you land on that, there'll, there'll be a sort of a jolt um, to the joint itself. So, I mean, may, maybe we can take this into walking because, um, you know, it, it, uh, it, it's the functionality of it that is um, important. Um, so, if we if we play with investigating how we walk, that might uh, give us a clue as to how to be kind to knees. So, let's see. Um, if you want to join me, um, you can stand. And 
we're going to investigate taking a step. And there's two parts to this investigation. There's the leg in front and there's the leg behind. Okay. So to start with, we'll start with the leg in front and work out how you take a step. Uh, the foot action is to, first of all, extend through the heel. And I would spend some time seeing what support you get from that action of touching with the heel and looking for some support. Now, I'm guessing if you just give weight, your knee will uh, either collapse or become tense, okay? Um, if instead of that, you find a response up through your hip, through the hip bone, because that's where, that's where the support needs to travel. If you can find a feeling, and there, there's some muscles around here that get involved with that, if you can find a feeling that draws up away from the heel, moving away from you, um, it draws up in the thigh rather than the kneecap itself locking and pulling, pulling up. Okay? So the whole of the thigh at the top comes up. And then if you add a spreading of the toes, because they'll be doing that already, uh, just to put the heel down, um, and then take the weight forwards over the little toe edge, and then see how that engagement with the little toe edge works. And again, it's the same, it's the same sort of muscles around the, more around the outside now. Okay. Um, then you'll have a foot and ankle working at one end and a hip and upper thigh muscles and buttocks working at the other end. And then the last part is to put the foot down, which is rolling over the balls of the feet, the ball of the foot. Okay. And that's, a, that would be, a, um, work for the ankle. And again, something in the core around the pelvis will probably, probably, hopefully get involved with that. So what you end up doing is the down of the foot it happens in a sort of upward fashion around the hip. The result is that the knee joint opens in response to taking weight. Okay? So play with that a few times. It's good to stand back and take the weight off. It's good to be in a spacious relationship to what you're doing because you know if you're if you're doing this then you you confuse the issue so it's good to be in space whilst you work it out um looking at it confuses things you know you don't look at your feet when you walk so sensing support um this is a thing that we're looking for is support through our bones there is a heel at one end there is a thigh bone at the other end can i feel supported by the touch of the heel up through the thigh bone. Does that support me in space? Does it support my insides? Does it allow me to rest into the space behind me like I would be if I was relaxed? You know? If it does so, then I'm doing enough. I'm doing enough and I've got a good enough relationship between heel and hip joint um, with no problem in the knee. It, it, you don't have to pull up the knee to pull up the foot. You know, it's the foot that does that. Okay. So you breathe and then it's always good to breathe whatever action you're in, uh, investigating. And then when you release the breath, I would then take the little toe edge of the ground, uh, little toe edge of the foot to the ground, with the toe still spreading. It's sort of a karate chop feeling to see how that response, that kind of touch, um, comes up through the sides of me a bit more. And you might find that the ribs swing across to be supported by that. And again, it's all part of the same action and then the last part of taking a step is putting the ball of the foot down and that's the lowering of the ball of the foot the action of touch and again that uh, often people will pull up the kneecap with that it's not necessary if you're supported up through the hip and um, the thing that generally gets in the way is the weight of the organs that happens when there's no core responsiveness so something about allowing space in here and then using the touch to support that space, the touch of the foot to support that space as you release the breath. So that will, should leave you feeling very strong and supported through that leg. This coming up and the foot going down, the hip coming up, the foot going down. And uh, these are all uh, traditional yoga instructions. You know, the thigh comes up, the foot opens up and goes down. Um, Except the, the difference is you don't do it to the muscles. You, you do it as a response. You do it as a response to function. Yes, it's a kneecap that hurts. I'm not sure when you wrote that. Yes. So 
yes, if it's a kneecap that hurts, mm -hmm. then you need to leave the kneecap alone. And you have to work out other ways of being supported. And the, and the way is to use your foot at one end, and that involves toes and ankles and all sorts of things, and to use the thigh bone, the hip, the, the core musculature at the other end. Um, it takes me time, but I feel that's wrong. Really excellent. That's good news. Take your time. It can become a walking meditation. And the, th the part I didn't get to is when, when the ball of the foot goes down, um, that is the place that you, that you use to propel yourself forwards over the next step. So when the ball of the foot goes down, it's the ball of the foot going down that becomes, or the back leg that becomes your support. So the heel comes up, the little toe edge comes up. And it's like using the ball of the foot to send the world backwards. And you'll feel all the musculature around the back of you working. And, um, and it's the same stuff. It's the foot at that end, and it's the hip at this end. Okay? And that will propel you forwards. I, I sometimes use the analogy of um, um, walking backwards on one of those um, walkways in the airport, you know, with a, the treadmill underneath you. If, you. if you were to walk backwards on it, it would be like you're sending the floor beneath you backwards um, it feels more like that and you'll be using your foot and ankle at one end your hip and buttocks and that sort of thing at the other end and you'll be meeting the space behind you as you move uh, what was I going to say just one little uh, how am I doing for time one little addition to that is uh, we tend to do one end at a time so if you're working the foot um, you'll tend to miss the hip. And if you're working the hip, you'll tend to miss the foot. Um, the thing is, the nerve supply for the foot, the thing that allows your foot to be strong and active, is the relationship at the hip end. Because when, when you... Um, when, when there's no core responsiveness, when, there's no, when, the, when the organs are heavy and there is a resulting sort of carrying of a weight around the outside of the base of the spine, uh, then that tension impinges on the sciatic nerve generally and it reduces the function of the foot. And with the foot weak, then the knee will compensate and pull up to take the weight out of the foot. So it's, it's, a, it's a, a whole pattern of arrangement, a whole pattern of movement. You can't, um, well, you can try, but just strengthening the foot and ankle doesn't really work. And it, not because the, uh, it's nothing to do with muscles, really. It's more to do with the nervous system. And muscles, muscles are bags of water that contract when they get a signal. <laughs> so you have to get the signals there. And the signals get there when you resolve complications around the core and the the, the horse's tail, you know, the, 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 the nerves that come out of the base of the spine. So it, when you resolve that conflict by finding some inner support, and that's what all this sort of space-making stuff is about, and that, you know, you know about that, John, because you work with me. Um, you know, you find this space, and then you, when you release the breath, there's, a, there's an inner support that occurs if you decide to remain spacious. That inner support is the thing that takes away the external gripping of trying to be relaxed that happens when you try when you try and relax because generally what people do when they relax is they collapse um it's fine it's fine um it's the way it goes but uh what we want to learn how to do is to be supported because we relax and that's why it's so important to get these sort of core responsive um actions relating to the release of the breath relating to the release of the breath. So, you know, you make space to breathe, and that will be the drawing in and the widening and mm -hmm, all that sort of thing. And then when you use your foot with that space going on for support, you'll find that there is, the foot is more active because you've taken out some of the conflict around the, the sort of supply, the nervous supply for that foot. Um, so the whole thing becomes strong. Not... Uh, strong in uh, strong is a dif difficult word to define because uh, a lot of people think of strength as the effort involved in being strong. 
um, it's the stru it's structural strength. It's natural core responsive strength. Um, it's a it's a strength of nature, and that's what we're trying to uncover. And um, one of my biggest jobs is to I feel is to um, persuade people to go there. Um, there's no half. There's no half asking it. <laughs> it's just the way it is. Um, ah, good. You got it. Good. Excellent. Thank you, John. Um, you know, half opening up leaves you tense. If you if you want to open up, open up and meet that surface because that surface that you're avoiding because it feels tense. That surface is your support. And when it becomes tensile support, you can breathe it and you can release into it. Um, and whilst you're holding back, trying to relax, you're carrying tension that you're not aware of. So going into the fullness. Oh, hi, Annie. How nice. I did, um, I did my uh, training on Gary Carter's course with Annie Ferguson. Um, nice to see you. Um, what was I saying? Yes, uh, it, it's the, the fullness, the fullness of engagement that creates the conditions that allows you to um, release the complications in the body. And, uh, you know, the first point, like I was saying earlier, the first pause of call, we want to relax, certainly. So you've got to create a situation where you can relax. But as you, if you want to take that relaxation into space, then you need to fully look for support through your bones fully look for support from the space that you occupy, um, wholeheartedly see if the breath can agree with what you're doing, wholeheartedly allow the breath to release whilst engaging with what you're doing so you can learn how to be relaxed on deep inside and open from the spine. That's the, that's one of the goals, I think. So that's, uh, that gong was um, my time. I have a I have someone coming to see me in, in five minutes, so I, I better say goodbye. I hope that was um, hope that was good for you. Uh, those of you that just um, come on, please uh, do do watch afterwards. Um, yes, I hope that was of use. If 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 it was, can you say more about support from space? I, I'll have to do that next time, Annie. I'm afraid, um, but uh, I, I'm I'm here every week. I think at 10 30 um uk time so if 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 you're if you're around next week and uh you have that question jump on and ask me early on in the thing and i'll make a i'll make a class out of it so i hope that was useful people next time it's tuesdays at 10 30 any okay um Yes, I am Mark J. Aquaviva of the Aquaviva School of Yoga. This is my weekly Facebook Live. Um, I hope it was useful. And um, thanks, Dharma Bandhu. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, it was lovely to see everyone, and I will see you next time. Namaste.